Um, if you have your Bible, real quick, turn to Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. I remember reading this sometime back and realizing, well, geez, my, I, I was always looking at Jesus as like, you know, helping me in life. And then I read this and I realized, wait a minute, Jesus is my life. See, a lot of times what we want to do is add Jesus to our career, add Jesus to our life, add Jesus to things that we want to do, add things, add things. And, and you know, like Jesus, like, dude, you're awesome. Thank you for heaven and stuff. Like, come bless my life, please. Like, just, just add your thing. And, and, and you know, and... And, like, he, he'll respond to anything you'll give him. He absolutely will respond because he loves you so much. He's looking for any inroad into your heart that he can get. But he has something great for you called an abundant life. And that abundant life is when he actually becomes your life. Because he actually is your life. He actually is entirely your life. See, when we were, got saved, we got born again, and we got eternal life that doesn't just mean that you live forever because even those that aren't saved live forever, right? They just live forever in a bad place. We live forever in the good place. It's a TV show. But, um, but it doesn't just mean that you're gonna live forever. What it means is that you got this eternal life, which was actually Jesus's life. You live as long as Jesus lives, that you don't have a life outside of him. If you start to understand that, you'll understand the rock-solid security of your relationship with God that Hebrews says is an anchor for your soul, Jesus in the most holy place where he is in there, and if he is in there, I belong in there because he is my life. Right? Yeah, yeah. I, it's not Josh's life adding Jesus. At, adding Jesus. I'm not adding him to my life. I am him. He is me. We have become one. Wow. That's pretty awesome. The sooner you start renewing your mind to Jesus being your life is the sooner you start experiencing this abundant life he came to give you. And so the point is, what you're going to hear from Brandon today is when his life changed, first of all, meeting Jesus, then meeting his wife, and then, and then in, the, in his career path and in, in making it to the major leagues, the struggle turned into success when he stopped playing and doing life for Brandon. And he started living and playing ball for Jesus because Jesus is his life, not Brandon. I'm telling you, what would happen if you and your career, see, one of the things, I don't want to jump ahead, I, you know, we could do that, but one of the things I love that has stuck with me since me and Brandon were, were talking is Brandon shared that every time he, and I don't know if he does, I don't know if you still do this every at bat, but he steps out of the batter's box, right? Takes a deep breath and says, God, you got this. God, you got this. I thought, man, that is awesome. What if you, man, if you're a waiter, you're a waitress before every table you served, you said, God, you got this. Before anything you do, you invited God into your situation and invited Jesus and his life and who he is living in you and through you before everything you do, whether it's career, whether it's family, you're about to give your daughter a bath or do potty training or something, and it's like, God, you got this. And so instead of going through that struggle and really battling and getting frustrated, you remember, Remember, Jesus is my life, and Jesus, you got this. Amen. Amen. Why don't you guys give me a hand? Let's welcome Brandon Barnes on up here. So, so me and Brandon go way back. We hit, we uh, we went to high school together, and uh, and I guess we can kind of. Well, actually, why don't you introduce yourself and. To everybody. And uh, I'm Brandon. Uh, <laughs> I'm uh, 32 years young. I uh, went to school at Catella High School with Josh, and uh, we've known each other for a while. Um, married to my best friend for 10 years. Wow. Uh, I have two beautiful daughters, Kennedy and Tatum. Um, you know, I've just been blessed to be able to, to play a game for a living, uh, to 
do what I love. Um, I think it's a blessing, and I, I wasn't able to do that without uh, the help of Jesus and uh, just him pushing me along the way and supported my wife uh, and family. That's awesome. Now, let's, let's start off here because you weren't always like a Christian. <laughs> huh. <laughs> you weren't always the nice guy, and, but maybe, maybe he's not so nice on the baseball field from what I hear. He, yeah, like, I got a little fire in me. <laughs> but... Um, uh, we were talking the other day about um, kind of your Jesus kind of changing your life. Why don't you share a little bit about that, about kind of where you were back when you were 17, 18 years old and how God got a hold of you? Yeah, so I, I grew up in the church. Um, my parents dragged us to church. And, uh, you know, when I was about 11, 12 years old, my parents divorced. Um, so it, it, it hit me. It hit me hard. Um, but as I got older, I kind of find, found myself going the wrong way, taking the wrong path. And in every decision, you have an opportunity to make the right one and the wrong one. And I decided to make the wrong one almost every time. <laughs> but uh, as I got older, I, I, I got into high school. And um, to take my distraction off home and family and, and the divorce, uh, I told myself, I said, I'm going to be the guy. I'm going to be the, the jock, the, the guy that everybody looks to as, as, as the stud of the, of the school or, or the guy, you know, Mr. Jock, uh, whatever you want to call it. That's and he definitely <laughs> was, like, okay, because he's, you're, you're what, 6'1", six, six one. Six one, and I was like 5'4", 100 pounds, <laughs> and <laughs> I think he was only nice to me because of how little I was, but anyway, no, sorry no. to interrupt. But. No, so, you know, I, um, I took that upon myself to, to make a distraction and, and put sports and that part of my life in front of everything, you know, whether it be school or my family, I, I put that in front and wanted to be the guy. So if someone said, hey, let's, you know, let's, let's do this. I'm like, all right, let's go do it. So I, I pretty much say yes to anything you asked me back then. Um, and as I got older, uh, I was one foot in, one foot out. And I, I got into some trouble. I think uh, it's my junior year, and uh, my best friend was dating my now wife um, at the time, and we were, um, we were crazy, so we, uh, me and my buddy ended up going out and meeting up with uh, some friends, and that night we ended up getting into a huge fight, um, getting, I, at this time I had a full scholarship to, to University of uh, California, Los Angeles, UCLA. Oh, so uh, I had a full scholarship for football. Um, wasn't much of a baseball player in high school. Uh, and we, we just got into a fight. It was a bad decision. Um, ended up being handcuffed on the side of a, the 55 freeway in Catella. And just thinking that my scholarship, my life, is, is going to be over. Because at that time, sports was everything to me. Um, I didn't really care about anything else but sports. Uh, so that was the, the first hit. And then uh, a week later, I was, you know, young, not very smart kid, and I was walking into Ron John and didn't have money, so I decided to to grab a couple things, um, put it in my bag, and and try and try to walk out. Um, didn't work out. Ended up uh, being handcuffed for the second time that week, dragged and put into a cell inside the uh, the block of Orange. Um, and I just remember how disgusted I was with my life at that point. Um, so long story short, I took a bunch of classes, had to do community service. So I decided I had a friend whose dad was a pastor at a church. <laughs> Easy community service time. I can get my 30 hours done like that. I know the guy. He'll get, I got an in. So uh, I go do it, and he tells me that if I help set up, I sit in the front row with my Bible and take notes, and then sit, uh, help and, and uh, tear down. He'll give me an hour, two hours, plus an hour on top for, for taking notes. So I sat there, and first day didn't take notes. So he decided to give me zero hours for the day. I was like, all right, I guess maybe next time I'll pay attention. So um, I sat down the next time and, and paid attention and, and just kind of let it, come to me. I didn't try to force anything. And I think about a month into it, 
uh, my community service was done and I was hooked. I mean, I was like this. My eyes are so wide every time I stepped in the church and I was just hooked to Jesus. I was hooked to God. I was hooked into to that I didn't have to hold that burden of everything that I had in my life and that I could just give it away and he would take it. And uh, I remember being baptized and um, it was one of the best days of my life because I didn't have to live for me anymore. I got to live for him and uh, it was a blessing. So, you know, going through failures and, and some things on and, you know, being able to be blessed with such a, a beautiful God and, and Jesus that cares so much about you. It's been amazing. It's awesome because I know when we were chatting, you were talking about how um, your parents divorced and there was a lot of anger inside and kind of your outlet was sports and, um, and being the guy and stuff and how that when you got baptized and when, when you made that commitment to Jesus and everything, how, like you just said, it was just that release, like a total release and Jesus just took it all. And, What's so cool about that is, um, you know, that that's the actual practical thing of when Jesus hung on that cross and received our guilt and our condemnation and our shame and our sin. That's what happened. And when you hear the good news of Jesus, when you hear the gospel and you believe in it, there's that transaction that takes place. It's that exchange where Jesus says, you give me your ashes, I'll give you beauty. You give me your sorrow, I'll give you joy. It's beautiful. Um, And uh, so... I know we could be on that for a while and just kind of your for, for going there and stuff, but um, I, to, to, uh, I know that he was going to play football. He was a football player, and he was, a, he was good at it, you know? And, but he, you went to Cypress College. Why don't you share a little bit about that and your journey into baseball? Yeah, so it's a crazy, crazy story. Um, I was a football player through and through. Um, I quit baseball my senior year of high school just to concentrate on football. I knew that, you know, my parents didn't have money, so for me to get to college, I needed a scholarship. Um, so I did everything I could. I, you know, was in the weight room longer than anybody else. I, I practiced longer than anybody else. Um, and so my senior year comes, and the one thing that I didn't do was give everything I had at school. So. Um, I had to take two math classes my senior year. You know, usually you're looking forward to that TA class or that wood shop class where you just kind of hang out. But no, I was taking extra classes and uh, I was, I had my scholarship and I think it was, it was God's idea to have a coaching change at UCLA and my scholarship was taken away. He wanted to give it to somebody else. A new coach came in and uh, I was bummed, but I was okay with it because I had told myself, I, I give you my life. Um, and at that point, I was playing baseball with buddies, you know, a little league team. And I mean, it was called big league. We were 17, 18 years old. But uh, we traveled and we ended up going to the World Series. Um, I had a, probably one of the best series of my life. I hit eight home runs in 10 games. I hit like 500. Um, so a buddy of mine said, why don't you play baseball? You're pretty good at it. I said, yeah, but I'm really good at football, like really good. Um, So that night, I remember going back to the dorm and just sitting on my bed and praying. I don't know what I'm going to do. I I had no idea at that point. And I just remember waking up in the morning and be like, I'm going to play baseball. I'm going to do it. So I told my dad, and we got on the uh, computer, and we took a, I just set up to take a class at Cypress College. And uh, my buddy got me a tryout with the coach. I tried out. He said, all right, we're going to hold you on to the fall. I went out, led the team in almost every offensive category in the fall. And uh, he told me, all right. Wait a minute, real quick. Do you realize what just happened? He went from not playing baseball to leading a college baseball team in statistics. Like, like, let me go, let me go do uh, uh, rugby or something, like, and then just, you know, tear it up. That doesn't happen. That's pretty incredible. But you, you can see the hand of God on his life, right? And, and God's directing his steps. Like, it's amazing what, you, what can happen in your life when you give it to him. What, rem- not to interrupt, but when, when, the, when the child had five loaves and two fishes, and the child's hand, it was what? 
five loaves and two fishes. Y'all know what happened when he gave it to Jesus, right? Fed 15,000 plus people. See what happens when you can give your life to him. Anyways. Yeah, the, the crazy thing was, is, you know, being young and 18 years old, I was still kind of one foot in, one foot out, but it was better than two feet out. You know, so I think he was working me, you know, in the right way. So um, we're ready to go to college. You know, I, I, I lead the team in statistics that, that fall, and the coach says, all right, you know, here's the time where we're going to either redshirt guys, we're going to cut guys, or you make the team. Uh, and so I was like, oh, man, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, I had a good time, but he's like, all right, you're going to make the team. I was like, awesome. I'm going to be a starter. I'm going to kill it. I didn't play the first three games of the year. I sat the pine. But uh, I got, he, he gave me a chance. I got in there, and um, first game, we're, I think we're just beating the brakes off somebody. And he's like, all right, Barnes, you can go in now. I'm like, sweet. <laughs> so I go in, I hit two doubles. Uh, my only two at-bats, I hit two doubles. And uh, I get to start the next game. Uh, I think I hit two doubles and a home run that game. Uh, and the rest was history. I ended up uh, that season being all conference, all state, um, freshman All American, and was drafted in the sixth round by the Houston Astros. That's pretty crazy. That's awesome. And it's, it was crazy because I hadn't played baseball in two years. Um, and once I just gave it to him and just said, I'm not worrying about it, and just played, it was unreal. But at the time, I was still one foot in, one foot out. And I think that's what kind of leads to, to the next part. Yeah, so, um, well, you can just jump right into it, where um, now you're, uh, you're in the minor league system. And uh, why don't you just take off from there, where you're in it for years and struggling and, and so forth. Yeah, so I, you know, coming out of college, I'm the dude. I, you know, I just had a great season. I'm going to go play bro ball. Everybody's better than me. Everybody. These guys have been playing baseball forever, the high level playing travel ball, and I just wasn't as good as them. Um, so I had to work harder. Uh, I remember my first two years in rookie ball, I'm out in Greenville, Tennessee, out in the sticks, in the middle of nowhere. And no offense to anybody. Yeah, no, no offense. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. We, we almost moved to Tennessee last year, but, uh, you know. Being a kid from Orange County, you know. Bad idea, moving you go to Tennessee. To, to Terrible. Tennessee and, Definitely not God. It's, a, it's, a, not it's God. an eye-opening. But uh, no family. I'm 19 years old. My girlfriend at the time is back home, and, you know, I'm lost, and I'm just struggling. You know, nothing's happening the way I want it to happen. Um, so I just keep grinding. I think my third year, I call my wife one day. I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come home. I'm done. I'm going to play. I'm going to go play football. And I, she doesn't remember this, but I remember her telling me this vividly. She said, if you come home, I'm gonna, the doors will be locked. And I said, well, I guess I'll stay then. <laughs> um, so, you know, years roll on, and I, I'm just struggling. It's about a point where they're like, you've got to figure it out, or we're going to release you. We're going to send you home. It's the end of your career. So it was 2011, I'm in AAA, and I'm in Round Rock, Texas, and I am awful. I am hitting 180, I can't even hit 200. I'm sitting the bench, yeah, ouch, it hurt. <laughs> and uh, I just remember sitting there and like, gosh, something needs to happen. And so I go into my coach's office, and this is like the worst idea ever, but after I had told myself, oh, sorry, I skipped ahead. So I, I, 4 o'clock in the morning, I'm struggling. I'm so mad at myself. And I call my pastor. This is the pastor that gave me my community service hours and, and kind of helped me through my career and my walk with, with Jesus. And I remember calling him 4 o'clock in the morning. I can't sleep because I just, I don't know what to do. I'm quit. I'm going to go home. I, I can't do this anymore. I tell him this. And. He says, Brandon, don't play for you. Play for Jesus. Play for God. Show, give your abilities out there to help other people that are dealing with things like you, that you're dealing with. And I just took it, and I was like, all right, I'm not going to play for me. I'm going to 
play for God. I'm going to give it to him. And, and whatever happens, happens. I'm going to have fun. But I'm going to let people know why I play this game. I, I don't play this game for me. I play this game for God and everything he's done for me. And he's given me this opportunity to play such a beautiful game for a living. I get, I get to actually pay my bills playing baseball. Um, so I remember that night, I didn't go to bed till like five, but I woke up the next morning and I go into my coach's office. And I said, Skip, um, do you mind sending me down to double A? And this is something you do not do. Like, you, this is like saying, can I get demoted in my job, please? <laughs> can I take a, a, my paycheck? Just, can, you could give me less, you know? So I went in there and, and I just felt this on my heart that I needed to go down, get more work, and find a way to get better. And he told me that's not a good idea. I said, it's all right. It's what I, what I think I need to do. So after the game that night, he calls me in, and he sends me to double A. I go to double A, and uh, I had a great finish to the year. I finished strong. And I was going into free agency, so I had no idea what I was going to do because I was with the Astros for eight years. I had been in the minor leagues for eight years at this point, uh, seven, seven and a half, um, just grinding, um, making pennies and trying to figure out, you know, we, me and my wife, we lived with host families. People took us into their house, which was another thing that I think Jesus just put on these people's heart to, to take us in and take care of us. Um, so I remember going to spring training the next year, stoked, like, yes, I'm going to go to AAA. I'm going to kill it. Got to go to my first major league camp. I was the first guy cut. <laughs> um, which I, I hit 300, I don't know, in my 10 at bats. Uh, <laughs> But they sent me down, and I remember them telling me, you're going to AAA, don't worry about it, just go down and have fun. All right, perfect. Last day of spring training comes, I'm going to look at the rosters, and I go through AAA, and I don't see my name. I'm like, here we go again. So I, I get sent to AA, and I remember my coach coming up to me and saying, Barnes, I give you 24 hours to be as mad as possible, and then it's time to play. I don't need 24 hours. I got God. I got Jesus. I don't need 24 hours. I'm going to go out there, I'm going to do my thing, and whatever happens, happens. Come to find out, I was uh, Texas League Player of the Week two weeks in a row. I was an all-star, pre-all-star, and then I was brought up to AAA. I uh, went up to AAA and ended up hitting 330 for two months, and a guy ran into the wall in the big leagues and, and broke his shoulder. And I remember being in Salt Lake City, Utah, just got uh, walked off by uh, Cole Calhoun home run. Um, and I remember my coach calling me in because I was in center field. And he, he asked me, like, I thought he was going to ask me where the pitch location was because I don't know why he's calling me in after we just lost. But uh, he comes in, he goes, something wrong with your attitude. I said, my attitude? I said, I've been the same guy. I'm struggling a little bit right now, but, uh, you know, I'm just trying to stay level-headed. And he goes, no, you're, you're not the same guy. You're not the guy that has salt and vinegar running through his veins and is ready to go do anything. I said, no, I'm fine. I said, I'm the same guy. Don't worry. He goes, good, because you're going to the big leagues. And I remember uh, covering my, my face and just crying for like 20 minutes. And when I, when I pulled my, my shirt down, every coach was crying. And... I think that is just a testament of how God doesn't let you quit. He doesn't give up on you. Um, he knows what you're capable of, and he's going to continue to push you. And uh, it's funny, because I look back at the date where I called my pastor compared to the date where I got called up, and it was almost a year to that date where I stopped playing for me, and I played for God, and I gave my life to him. And it was one of the craziest days. But uh, it was awesome. Wow. I, we could, like, soak in that for a while and kind of think. I'm thinking in my life, like, man, how, what else can I give to God? <laughs> like, <laughs> get called up, you know? <laughs> that is awesome. Um, I think it's a perfect segue into, um, which I think is my favorite story. I mean, I, I think that's all so cool. Like, I mean, to 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 be fighting for something and to be believing God and to be doing something for eight years in the, in the minors and then to get called up to the majors. I mean, that's just incredible. That's just, 
I can just imagine the joy that you felt and probably calling Sean right away after. And yeah, Sean thought I was joking. <laughs> she, she's like, there's no way. She just, and then I think it sank in when she realized that it was really happening. She was just so happy and we were all crying and we knew that we had to get on a flight to Houston the next day. So I had to find ways to get her out there and my family out there. And it was just... And didn't she start she, that day? Yeah, I show up to the clubhouse the next morning. I wake up at four to get on a six o'clock flight. I show up in the clubhouse, and I mean, I'm just a deer in headlights. Like, this is amazing. Like, this, you know, there's steak over here, and there's chicken, and there's oh, bats, wow. whatever you want. I mean, it, the big leagues is the greatest thing ever. We got to hear about this later. It's like heaven on earth, later. man. It's like wow. whatever you want. But uh, That's cool. So I show up, and I Chris, look at the... Chris, our green room needs to be improved a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I show up, and uh, I look at the lineup, and my, my name's up there. I'm like... Oh, wait, first day I'm already in the lineup. I was so nervous. I sh My first four at-bats, I grounded out to the same exact place. I think I hit all four balls to the, to the uh, second baseman. Um, my first hit came the second game, and uh, it was over the second baseman's head this time. So uh, we made it work, but it was, it was a blessing. That's awesome. So the segue... Now, you told me about what was probably the, one of the best days of your life. Such a cool story. Take it away. Yeah, the, uh, I call it the best day of my life. You know, I've got quite a few of those days, you know, between getting married to, to my best friend, um, my wife giving birth to my oldest daughter, and then um, the best day of my life, which is because there's so much involved that made this happen. And uh, I remember right before the All-Star break in 2013, that year I'd, I'd broke camp with the team for the first time. I was a rookie, and uh, I was having a great start to the year. And I remember the last couple weeks, I just I couldn't get a hit. It didn't, I mean, it didn't matter if you took everybody off the field. I still wouldn't get a hit. <laughs> so I was just struggling. We're in Tampa Bay, Florida. and. I have a couple friends who, you know, we had a tight group then that were all believers and we all trusted God and had this, this deep faith. And a friend of mine, Luke Scott, played eight years in the major leagues with Baltimore. He played with Tampa Bay. He played with Houston. Um, huge man of faith. And so I remember going to uh, his room with uh, a friend of mine, Carlos Pena, uh, Justin Maxwell and uh, their their friends and, and we sat there and we're just talking baseball we're talking family and, and faith and and uh, politics you know we talk about everything and I remember leaving that night and, and getting together and praying and he said let me pray for you guys and and still to this day it's the most magical prayer I've ever been a part of um, if you've ever been in a prayer where someone is speaking in tongues it is the most powerful thing you ever come across and I remember Luke sitting there while we're praying, talking and speaking in tongues, and just feeling this Holy Spirit come over me, and just just this amazing feeling while this prayer is going on. And I remember going back to my room, and at this time it's like 1:30 in the morning. I go to my room, um, and I just sit there. You know, I'd been struggling. I was like, I, I've given my life to you, and this is where you kind of step back, and you're like, everything's not working for me, for me, but it's not about me. So I go into my room, and I sit there with my eyes wide open. It's 2 o'clock at this point, and I feel this, this presence overcome me. I'm laying in bed, and this presence just overcomes me, and I remember it vividly. I, I swear someone was in my room. Say, I got you. I've got your back. Till 3 o'clock in the morning, I listen to that for an hour. Say, I've got your back. And at this time struggling. Sean and I were trying to have a second child, and it had been about six, seven, eight months, and, you know, we've had some complications in the past with having a, a child, and so we, we, were, we were just praying heavily, and, we, and we, we just gave it all to him. And I remember that night going back the next day in Houston and telling Sean, like, you will not believe this. He was talking to me. You know, he, he sat there, and he talked to me, and I could hear him. It was like another person was in the room with me. And so all-star breaks there, and, and I don't pick up a bat for three days. So I'm not thinking about baseball. I don't want anything to do with baseball over the all-star break. So we just have family time and uh, just enjoy the break. 
break ends. It's always way too fast. Um, I remember we were playing the Seattle Mariners. Uh, first game back from the All-Star game, I'm starting. Um, my first at bat, second pitch, home run. I haven't picked up a bat in three days. I'm like, all right, this is a great start to the second half. <laughs> and so I came up for my second at bat. And uh, I just hit a line drive right center triple. I'm like, good start. Here we go. I give it to you. Let's go. <laughs> and I come up for my third at bat. And I just hit, I mean, not even hard. And it just squiggles and finds its way through the infield. And I got a single. I'm three for three. And I just remember standing at first base and be like, he's really got my back. He's, he's got this. And so I come up for my fourth about, and uh, all I need is a double for the cycle. Cycle is one of the hardest things to do in all of sports. I'm not the best hitter in baseball. I've never, I'm more of a defensive player. But um, I came up there, and I just remember stepping in the box, like Josh said, and said, I give it to you. Whatever you want, I'm here. I'm just playing. And uh, First pitch was a cutter on the outside half, and I hit it right down the right field line. I mean, it was so close to being foul that it literally jumped over the base. And uh, I remember it was perfect ricochet to the right fielder, and I said, I'm going for it. So I just, I turn first base, and he gets the ball. I dive in, and uh, well, why don't we just play the video? It was the first day after the All-Star break. I had struggled uh, the last couple weeks before the All-Star break. I can remember this so vividly. I was laying in my bed and being a religious guy, you know, I felt like I had God in my ear telling me that I don't worry, I've got your back. Me and my wife were also trying to have a second child at the time. And she was praying a lot and I was praying. And so that first day after the All-Star break, we go out and play the Mariners, Joe Saunders is pitching. My first at bat, I hit a home run. It's in the air and deep to left center field. Barnes gets a long run, and Brandon Barnes will take the tour. Get a feeling Brandon Barnes had a talk with himself over the All-Star break. Played more aggressive, his style of play. I was like, okay, this is a good start to the day, you know. I'm feeling this. Second at bat, uh, triple right center gap. Still not thinking about, you know, I could hit from the cycle or whatever. But, you know, I've got two of the harder hits out of the way. You know, let's just keep this rolling. It was a tight ball game. I go up there for my third at bat. I mean, I hit just a C and I single. It just kind of rolls through the infield. Three for three, Brandon Barnes. Homer, triple, single. Obviously, it would be fun if he could parlay this into a cycle night. I come up for my fourth at bat. I know what I need. I'm pretty sure everybody else in the ballpark knew what I needed, and uh, I hit it, went right down first baseline. I was just hauling, trying to do everything I could to get to second base. Dove in, he called me safe. And shoots one up the right field line. Let's see if he can get to second. He's going to give it a shot. Here's the throw from Saunders, and he is safe. It's a cycle from Brandon Barnes. I was just in awe of what I had just done because how rare it is, and I never thought, I mean, million years that I've hit for the cycle in the big leagues. Being able to do that was, was special and to have my wife and my daughter there and then going home that night my wife's giving my daughter a bath and I'm in the other room eating dinner and uh, she calls me in. I was like okay I guess I gotta hurry up. She sounded kind of worried or something so I, I run in there. My wife actually put the little sticky letters I use in the bathtub for the kids. Said I'm gonna be a sister uh, on the wall and I, I kind of Stop for a minute, and I was like, this has got to be one of the best days of my life. I just hit for the cycle, and now that we, we've been struggling to have a, a child for over six months, uh, and it all happens in the same day, was, was a miracle, and it was something that's only God given, and to be able to see the joy on my daughter's face and my wife's face, and then to see the joy on my face was, was priceless. That's so cool. That's so rad. Just 
God's got this. I love that. I've been using that a lot in my mind, like, God's got this. God's got this. He but, does, man. It's, it's, it's amazing to know what can happen when you dive in head first. You know, I would for so long been one foot in, one foot out. And when I fully gave my life to him and just said, here you go, whatever you want is where I'm going to go. And from that point, everything's been great. I've, you know, last three years, I've been up and down. You know, it hasn't been where I, what I want, but it's what he wants, and it's his path from my life, and, and I'm fine with that. I'm grateful. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, I did want to uh, open it up to anybody, if anybody had any questions for him about anything about baseball or life, um, you know, anything, um, you just let me know. Think about it for a minute, because I have a question. Um, was, uh, <clears throat> were, you, were you excited that... Was there instant replay on that uh, that second base? Time? So that was the year right before replay came into play. <laughs> How stoked are you? I was <laughs> super stoked because it was a close play. Bang, um, bang. <laughs> we went back and looked at different views, and it was so close that you could you couldn't tell it could have gone either way. Um, I always say that the umpire called me safe. I won't say that I was safe, but the umpire <laughs> called me safe. Um, but that's another thing. I, I could have e- easily been called out. Yeah, and I right. think, you know, right. God just I've seen threw some that little help calls. in there. Oh, yeah. What's his name? Pitching the no-hitter and the guy's two feet off of first base. And, yeah. Oh, that's, Colorado. Yeah. 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 So, um, so now where are you now and what's, uh, what does next year look like? So I re-signed with the Cleveland Indians. Uh, this will be my second year with them. Uh, head out in just, just about a month to go to spring training in Goodyear, Arizona go out there and I have an opportunity to go win a job, uh, be either the starting left fielder or maybe win a fourth, fifth outfield job. Awesome, awesome. And and does anybody have a question that they would like to ask, anything? I got you. (laughs) Oh, you're leaving me? (laughs) Hello and thank you for being here with us today. It's been a blessing hearing you. Thank you. Um, I've always wondered what happens to the families when you travel or when you're moved to another team. Do you get another house, or how does that work? <laughs> so um, early on in our career, you know, we didn't have a house. We just rented apartments. And um, our oldest was young, and she wasn't in school, so we got to travel. She, you know, they traveled with me everywhere. Um, we get an apartment, whatever city I was in, and if we had to get up and go to a new team. Um, Thankful to my amazing wife, she would pack everything because I had to be on a flight the next morning, and she would find a way to get it to that city. Um, now, as you get to the big leagues, it gets a little easier. They put them on first-class flights and stuff like that. But uh, no, we have home bases here in Anaheim. Uh, they don't travel as much anymore because the kids are in school full time. Uh, but I will have an apartment in whatever city I'm in, or I'll stay in a hotel for that time. But it's it's tough being away from the family. When you are on the road, how do you connect up with your friends so that you can keep a support group, so you can have people that you're accountable to and that you can be helpful to them also to be accountable, just in a general lifestyle, and also, too, for prayer and other things you need? Yeah, so um, FaceTime is huge uh, with family and friends back home. Uh, Try to do that as much as possible. You know, my schedule is a little different because I'm at the field from one till about one o'clock at night. Um, So I try to throw in FaceTime with the family throughout the day. Um, But there's, uh, we have a thing called Baseball Chapel. And every team has has their own Baseball Chapel. They have their own chaplain. And uh, it happens usually sometimes twice a week, a Wednesday and a Sunday, depending on night game, day game. Uh, But that's a time where we all get together um, and we we talk each other. And we also have side groups that we'll kind of keep each other accountable. And we'll pray for each other and just just make sure that we're getting that because it's hard to get that on a, on a daily basis when you're playing baseball 162 days. It's hard to get that when you're in <laughs> True. Uh, couple que- a couple question about your uh, defense, uh, defensive part of your uh, game. Can you share some 
uh, incidents from that. We saw some clips, uh, previews when before you came, but uh, can you share in that line? Yeah, for me, defense it came very naturally. It was um, I took it as being a wide receiver, you know, playing football for so long that I decided when I was going to play the outfield, every ball that was hit in the air, I was going to play it like a wide receiver. I was going to go get it. It's got to be caught, or you don't get the first down. So. Uh, I just continued to, to do go as hard as I could, and I remember having a concussion because I ran into a wall because I went too hard, um, coming home with bruises and cuts and just you know dive. I've broken belts diving, and um, but it's laying yourself out on the line for a teammate. Um, you know the pitcher doesn't have control once he re once he releases the ball, so I figured it's my duty, it's my job to help my team out teammate out and and to do whatever I can to help him now uh, no more questions sorry <laughs> it, we're gonna have to close here um, but uh, I thought what was really cool um, uh, when I asked you uh, you got to play at Angel Stadium yeah. and you had a dream of hitting a home run <laughs> right, tell us about that what happened so um, you know growing up in Anaheim I rode my bike to the stadium and I was a diehard Angels fan and I always said, I'm going to play in Angel Stadium. I'm going to be a major leaguer, and I'm going to play in Angel Stadium. I finally got that chance in 2013. Probably had 50 to 60 fans, family, friends that uh, all came to the game. It was a night game. Uh, I remember planning this out since I was four years old. I'm going to hit a home run. I'm going to bat flip. I'm going to jog slowly around the bases so my family can enjoy it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cross home plate, and I'm going to point to my family and just say thank you. And so that moment came. And I remember hitting the ball, holding my bat, throwing it to the side, and start to jog. But that night, they decided to put Mike Trout in left field. And the greatest baseball player in my generation, I think of all time, decided to jump over the wall and catch my ball. <laughs> and so I, the dream that I had, had held on to for so long was diminished in seconds. <laughs> but it'll, at least it was the great, one of the greatest players to do it. So. Yeah, that's pretty awesome to get robbed by Mike Trout. That's yeah. pretty cool. Well, um, uh, I just want to say thank you to Brandon so much for coming and joining up with us and sharing your story. Well, thank you guys um, for having me. Uh, again, I just think it's pretty awesome. You know, if, if you can take anything away from this is perhaps on your way home, you know, tonight or whatever, you can start thinking in your mind like, man, what if I gave my job to God? You know, what if I started, you know, I don't care what you do. It doesn't matter what you do. Anything you do, man, I can do this with him and I can give this to him and I can do it as unto the Lord. See, when you're working for money and you're working for people, your reward is that paycheck. But God said in his word that when you do it as unto the Lord, he's your rewarder. So it's all about the motive. It's all about what's behind it. If you want his reward, and I think the God of the universe perhaps could possibly, maybe just a little bit, reward you a little better than that company you work for. <laughs> just saying. Perhaps you can find more fulfillment in life, maybe, if the creator of you was the one rewarding you. Amen. So just think about that. And let's give uh, Brandon a hand. Thanks so much, buddy. <laughs> Thanks, man. And uh, we don't want to ever close the service out without giving people an opportunity to receive Jesus. So if everyone's head could just be bowed and eyes closed. And if you're in here and you say, man, I, I, I don't know this Jesus, this God that Brandon was talking about. And um, I want to know him. I want to give my life to him. I want to give my career to him and, and everything. In just a moment here, we're going to take a moment where we're quiet. And just from the bottom of your heart, just with your heart, confess Jesus as Lord. Say, Jesus, be my Lord. Be my Savior. I need you in my life. The Bible says in Romans 10 that all who call upon the Lord shall be answered. And all who call upon the Lord, he is rich unto them. That he never turns anybody away. The cross of Jesus is paid for all of your sin, past, present, future. Really? The future sins too? Yeah, Jesus died 2,000 years ago, so if he didn't die for your future sins, guess what? We're in trouble. Thank you for that one. So right now, if 
you're in your head, you haven't said yes to Jesus, we're going to take that moment. It's going to be quiet in here. And I just want you to say, Jesus, be my Lord. And let's do that right now.